And welcome back to Career Build Series 2023. This is episode number 19, and so this is going to start the beginning of a new build. Um, I like to kind of diversify the gameplay a little bit, be able to have some different tools in the toolbox. And so part of the Career Build Series is the building portion of it. And so we're going to start a build here. And so what I want to do is get into our first seaplane. This is going to really help me get around the map. It's going to help me do some quick missions. Um, you know, so I think this is going to be good to get into. So... Uh, let's start by looking at some reference material. So this is the Dornier Sea Star, and so this is a inspiration, let's put it that way, that I've been kind of looking at for a little while that I've been wanting to build. You know, the last career build series, I built the Cormorant, which was a single engine, kind of based on the Republic CB, you know, or inspired by, this is going to be another inspired by build. And so I really like the Dornier Sea Star, and I like to build this. So I think it, it introduced some new elements. It introduces some changes, some differences from previous builds. So I like to kind of diversify the builds a little bit. So this is kind of a neat design. You know, it has the kind of the the boat bottom. It has these hips. I tend to call these hips. I don't know exactly what they're called. But, you know, it has pontoons, so I don't have to put them on the wings. It has a raised wing on a strut. Uh, this one is turboprop. Most likely I'm going to make it diesel. Diesel is just ultra efficient in game. The, you know, you can get diesel at the refinery, which is close to us for 35 cents a liter. Uh, you know, uh, I think we can buy, what can we buy jet for? Like a dollar 77, something like that, 78. And so that's really going to help us. Also, I can... It's actually about the same size to make a compact, which is actually kind of nice. You know, to to do a radial, I, I could do a flat diesel, really shrink the size down of the engine to sell here. So we can kind of see what that is. But if I do end up making it a radial, it'll be 3x3, three three, which is the same size as a turbine. So if I want to put turbine in there, as you can see, this is two turbines, uh, twin engine. So I definitely like to make it twin engine. The nice thing of having an inline, uh, inline propellers uh, inline drivetrain, let's put it that way. You know, my degree is in aeronautical science, so I like to kind of geek out on this. The benefit of this is, for example, you can, you know, especially in game, this the game is very sensitive to this. Let's say we had two engines, one on either wing, like a one, one on either side, like a de Havilland Beaver. IRL, I've done, I've done simulated, you know, real engine failures where you actually literally shut down an engine, feathered the prop. I've uh, done simulated single engines and jets and it's not a big deal in game you get a really big torque effect um the nice thing of having an inline setup is that if you, you can actually shut one prop off and your center of thrust maintains the same so you don't get any torquing effects you know we can shut down an engine we can operate them one so i think that's what we're gonna do i really want to kind of use this as reference material and so i'm not it's not going to be a replica it's not going to be perfectly the same i want it to be mine and different and have some interesting elements but I like to have kind of a pointy nose on it i uh, this is two seats we'll see how that turns out how big this has to get um you know i would like this to stay pretty economical one of the big limitations we have in game is the propeller diameter we can only shrink them down so much the other thing is on these seaplanes really need to use uh, a helicopter rotor one of the small ones because so your center of gravity is about here. It's right under your wing. So ideally, your center of gravity will be right in line with your center of lift. Center of lift is right about the center of the wing. Just draw a line straight down. You have the center of gravity. That's where your mass is. Pick straight up. The center of thrust is way up here. And so generally, the way that they deal with this IRL is the engines are slightly angled upward so that the thrust goes down changing the center of thrust calculation because what you can have is if you have the center of gravity here and you have your center of thrust up here it's going to try to push the nose down and so one way we can counteract this you know i could theoretically tilt the engines i don't want to do that what i want to do instead is use the pitch component of the propellers to actually uh, have the propeller almost like the propellers pitched up and that will counteract that force i like the struts and the wings so we're going to do all this so let's go ahead and get started all right so i'm not going to deal too much with actually trying you know i'm not going to measure the real sea star again this is i'm not building a dornier sea star replica i'm building my own my own aircraft and we'll go from there 
One thing is, you know, for example, that is, I, I don't know the width of the actual sea star, but the likelihood is that it is not as wide as it would have to be in game. You know, we have three block wide seats. And so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to, I want to make this compact. And so I'm going to start with a single seat uh, wide in the cockpit. You know, generally I'm by myself anyway, so I don't really need it super wide. This will really cut down the width of this. And so I think I definitely want to like this. So, you know, for example, if this was going to be two seats, we need six for the seats. Plus, I'd want a center console. So that's seven. Plus, if I put the walls directly on that, that's nine. Now we have, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we've cut the width down by two. So that will uh, give us a nice slimming effect on there. And then... What we'll probably do is seating on one side, aisle on one side. I think we can do that. I don't want this to have super capacity. You know, if I make a vehicle do everything, I've talked about this in the last career build series, is I hate having jack of all trades vehicles. You know, the expression jack of all trade, master of none. I really don't like that. I like to have a vehicle that does one or two things really well. And that reason, and for that reason, you have to go and move on to something else if you want it to. You know, you, you need a different vehicle to be able to do something else well. And I find that to be uh, more rewarding. It also gives me an excuse to build more things, you know. I often see people talking about boredom in the game, and part of it is, you know, if you, you can kind of set yourself up not to get bored by making th keeping things interesting. Let's put it that way. All right, and so I want to get working on this actual, like, bolt, boat hull section. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of work from the cockpit back, this is kind of my strategy is I work right where the seating is and then I move back and I move forward and that kind of gets me sculpting here. The big thing that always is a pain is trying to integrate the tail properly. So the other thing too is we need enough buoyancy in here. So one thought I had was to continue down with one buys here and make it a lit go down a little bit lower and this will allow me to put more buoyant volume in there I think that is what I'm gonna do because you know I'm trying to after doing this for quite a while I'm trying to see problems before they arise and one of them is going to be buoyancy and so by having a void here in the center that's gonna give me a good bit of buoyancy and you can also see I'll bring the reference material back up you can also see in this reference material here how it gets very thin towards the bottom. So it actually gets pretty pointy at the bottom and then it's pretty flat on top. So that's kind of what I'm looking towards. So that will both benefit, benefit us with buoyancy and it will also, I think, look the part. All right, so that's a good shape, I think. So I want to get working on this tail. So, you know, after building a ton of aircraft in game, I really, um, I find it important trying to get the integration of the tail and the nose. Like, I... I would say I spend most of my time trying to get like the cockpit area fleshed out and the tail fleshed out more than anything because you, this is where you have to start, you know, making critical decisions about your block choices, how they're cutting up and how they're cutting down. It's not going to be this long either, probably. You know, so one of the things I was talking about that's kind of our limiting factor that's going to determine the scale and where our scale is really going to get off is the propeller diameter. So one thing I want to do is throw up a quick prop. So the prop, like I said, I want that pitch component. So I'm going to use this rotor light. And as you can see the diameter, that's the starting diameter. We can go small in this, but not by much. I think it's using five blades. Let's go. So we're going uh, minimum diameter there on this. And so this is going to really set a lot of the scale. And so this is why I'm putting this in early. And so it sits up on the wing. And it almost, the propeller almost touches the top of the fuselage. So let's say maybe there. So that is going to be the propeller up there. And so it goes right over the cockpit. So it's about there. And I will end up trading this out when I actually put the other one on. But right about there, I'm thinking... All right, so as you can see, that that really is scaling us vertically to see where we're at vertically as well. The engine sits on top of the wing, the wing sits below, and then you'll have the struts there. And so this is all for for when do I begin my rearward slope. And so the top of this is very flat, and it goes all the way out to the tail, but it starts coming in. So what I want to do here is 
you start getting ready here to try to finish this tail. So I'm just going to lay out a long line here so I can get it going. So I'm probably going to want one by fours. I definitely know I'm going to want one by fours. Let's put it that way. And so I'm trying to stay away from one by twos to a certain extent on the bottom. The bottom tends to be a big pain when you're trying to hook up one by or, or two buys. They tend to be pretty problematic. Right, and so we want to cut there. I see if I can rotate that nine or ten more times. There we go. And so let's see. I'm trying to figure out how to get this lined up nicely here. See, I really I'm trying to think how to line this up properly. Let's start with the bottom and actually see where we can join the bottom first. Because it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting trying to join this tail up. So let's try with one by fours here. You know these are the longest innate blocks we have in game. We don't have any longer. You know we don't have any longer ones. And then this area should be reasonably easy to set up because it's just one buys. All right. So there's the there's most of our tail there. And let's try to join it this way. I think this is going to help us get this done a little bit more efficiently. So that's kind of what I'm looking for here. So that's actually, that's helping me a lot to kind of visualize what I need to do here. So that's going to go all the way up to there. This is going to continue. So I was just trying to start way too early. There we go. And the nice thing is I can cut chop this tail and move it forward and back. The cut feature in this game is really helpful. Okay, that goes there. Nice. All right, good. So that is that's a nicely integrated tail there. I'm I'm liking that. Let's see, and then I can cut in here, and we will do. Uh, those are. Let's see. This is going to be mismatched a little bit, but that's not the end of the world. Yeah, this uh, I can actually make this work pretty well, I think, here. So we'll go to 1 by 2s here. Because the 2 by 4s, as you can see, they split into 1 by 2s. So this actually adds a nice element to change the shape up a little bit, sharpens it nicely. So that is good. That actually came along pretty well. So that's a nice tail on there. And then this area here that slopes down, that's not a problem because that's going to flow right into the horizontal tail plane. So I'm just kind of checking the reference. It has a pretty modern flat flat tail on it, which is good. Kind of like a good bit of rudder authority. So, And I just want to put, I'm going to put a one by two wedge in here. I always contemplate how the best to do some of these builds is, you know, I like to do a lot of rescuing in the career build series, but it's also, a lot of people like to watch the building, and I also like to do the building, so kind of try to mix it up, building and rescues as much as possible. All right, that's good in there. Now I was kind of trying to decide, do I want to go do some fuel trading? Well, I don't have the cash yet, and so this is going to be a cash machine. This shouldn't cost me too much to build and to, to use in-game. But it should be able, it should make it so that, you know, if I have a quick mission, I can go do a rescue or something pretty quickly. All right, so that's in there. Nice. So this is actually progressing pretty nicely and pretty quickly. I think shaping is coming along nicely. All right, and then I want to go probably here, I'd say. All right. And then I'm thinking small. Let's see. Small is too small. Let's go medium. Medium's probably going to be where we're at. Yeah, medium looks good. That's a good size. It's about the top of the engine nacelles, which is where it is. IRL. Actually, I might want to move it over the tail plane. Let's try this. So I don't like any sort of clipping. So if it's going to clip, 
See that slope of it there? I kind of like it where it was, though. So let's just leave it where it was. We'll let it hang over a little bit. All right, there we go. All right, and then uh, what I kind of do is put a block and a one by four, uh, one by four wedge here. Let's get a this. See this ish, This is a, nah, it's not really an issue. That's going to be fine. All right, so let's put this like so, and then it. It looks like it has, oh, I don't know, maybe one, two. I need to be able to put a beacon on there. So, like, let's see. Probably, oh, I deleted something I didn't mean to. Right there. All right, and then we'll grab, flicking the camera around a little bit more than I like. There we go. All right, nice. And then I want these one by four or one by two wedges. One by two wedge right there. And then it comes down pretty sharply, actually, the real one. But that might be too sharp. Let's go like that. That, I think, is a little bit better. Yeah, I'm digging that. That's actually looking more accurate. Again, it's not a replica, but, you know, if you use real real life inspiration, it tends to look correct. And, you know, you don't, you don't need any experience in aviation if you follow kind of some reference material and you, you like... Well, I don't know why it looks right, but it looks right. I don't know why that thing is there, but it's there and it looks right, you know. And so you can make yours kind of function right and look right. All right, so that's good. That's a nice tail there. All right, good. So the vertical tail plane is in on this one. The horizontal tail plane is up here. It's about mid. So that's good. So I want... I don't want them interacting, and they're actually, they are ahead like this, so. That's probably, I'll push them back here. The likelihood they interact there is slim, so let's go. So right about that is correct there. Good. Nice. I do like these, um. These horizontal tail planes that are about midway too. I just always kind of like those. And then I need to try to see what the angle is. It's probably going to be one by twos, I think. One by twos or one by fours. I could count, but I could go one further forward. It has a. It has a. The the reference is is much straighter, so I think a one by four. It's not a fast aircraft, so it doesn't really need. You know, it's pretty thin. Doesn't need a, a really big horizontal tail plane. That's pretty good there. I like that. There we go. All right, good. So I'm digging on that. That's looking good. Nice, so that sets up nicely. Fortunately, that's that looks correct, and that's pretty good. All right, so that's good. So my center of gravity is fine. I can move that at will. And I'm probably going to see, I have to build the nose up next. Let's do that. The big thing, too, is going to be how to put a door in here. This has to float high enough in the water that I can somehow get a watertight door. And the nice thing is I have a f nice flat surface here, so... So what I'm thinking is something, I want to slide an electric hatch so I don't flood myself so I can put auto shutting doors. So we're talking like there. So the hips are going to have to be here to be able to make that work. So that should be all right, I think, right about there. Yeah, so that should work. So we want to make sure the hips are down the bottom two sections. All right, good. So let's start working on the nose here. This is where it can get tricky, tricky. You know, I like I like the gentle slope of these, but then I lose any ability to put things on top. That's another reason why I didn't want to have two seats, is I can kind of give myself a little bit more real estate for controls. Because, like, I'm not going to be able to cut into the roof here and use any of this. Uh, the center section I can use 
for putting uh, any overhead switches. So I probably have about four slots there at most. All right, good. So that's nice. That's there. Uh, let's see. I need to try banging a window. So let's try, I don't know, corners. See where we're sitting on these here. Yep, those are definitely not going to work. Uh, what do I want here? Three by ones, like so. That's pretty good there. More window pieces would be very nice, of course, as always. You know, I'm not opposed, you know, I do a quite a bit of XMLing, but I'm, I tend not to want to do it with the windows. I want, especially this, I need this to seal. So this has to be watertight in order to work for me. So uh, probably three by two, I'm thinking. I don't want it to, I don't want it to go down too much here. This also gives me nice space for gauges. All right, good, that's there. And then I tend to put an eyebrow on here, which is just like a little bit of a flourish covering there, kind of like a visor. And that, that front seat's gonna move as necessary. So that's looking pretty good there. Now I need to try to figure out a reasonable window shape here. All right, and so what I'll tend to do is Kind of mark out where the dash is going to be. So dash would be there. Mark the dash up here. And this is just going to give me the ability to put some glass right on there. Right. And so I kind of want this to have a restrictive view. I don't want it to be overly... I don't want it to have too much view. And I tend to like the kind of the cozier cockpits. That's a one. I need a two at least. So what is that? Uh, one by two by three, two by two by three, I think. These are always treacherous for me to try to figure out how to rotate these suckers to get them right. There we go. All right, so those are going to go there for now. I'm going to have to redo that eyebrow, but that's not a big deal. Come on, give me the right block, please. What is going on? I already moved something, so I just didn't want to behave. All right, I like that. Let's see, is there any, I can join these up. I should be able to, I can push the eyebrow out with two buys, that's fine. So the eyebrow will now work. That's good, I like that. All right, so let's try to do, what are we talking here? Is it two buys? I'm thinking it's two buys right here. That's looking pretty good there. All right, good. And then I'm probably probably do a center bezel on here. So something like that. The problem, no, I can't do that. I'm sitting in the middle. If I was sitting one side or the other, I could do a center bezel, but I can't do it with um, with me sitting like that. So I need a, where are you at there, guy? I just saw it. Where is it? There we go. So that'll work. And then I just need to redo my eyebrow here. So that's going to be two buys. So this will actually work out. This is coming out along nicely. All right, here's a one by two. All right, so that, that kind of gets that sort of nice pleasing shape there. I like that for the cockpit. And let's see. So nice visibility. I don't want I want don't want this to have too much visibility. I could do, go down another block, but I don't want to. I want to kind of have a little bit of a restricted vis here. So I think what I'm going to do is change the side windows too. It's a small airplane, you know. I like the restricted visibility, especially on a seaplane. And so it has a really pointy nose, so keeping that in mind. Yeah, keeping that in mind, I'm thinking of going two by fours like so. Yeah, this has a really pointy nose on it, so I'm thinking like that. And 
Nice. This is really, I think this is going to work out well for me. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking this. I think this is going to is going to come out nicely. You know, that uh, the reference has really a really pointy nose there. So I might, I'm going to probably change over to twos right here. I don't want this being too long. Okay, that's Let's see. Let's try putting some twos on here, and if I don't like it, I will start with twos and test that out. All right, let's bring the reference material and kind of look at that. Yeah, so if we go and look, go ahead and look at that, we have a very gentle slope. Again, we can only go one by fours here, but probably let's try to come up from the bottom and keep that as flat as possible. Let's see if that's possible. You know, this is often how I find the easiest way to not get make your build look too goofy is to kind of, you know, follow some reference material and... You know, if it's looking a little goofy, you can always be like, hey, that's that's what the real one looks like, man. You know, so it's um that's why I like following these reference materials. Again, not a replica, but definitely an inspired by type of thing, like type of dealio. This is gonna be interesting to finish. Try to round maybe a little bit here. Yeah, that rounding that's gonna really help, I think, finish it off. Yeah, that's looking good there. It's also going to hopefully help to keep it from torpedoing underwater when we take off. Yep, so I'm digging that. So ours might be a little bit square on this front, especially we have to consider the game mechanics and how best to make this work within the constraints of the game. So that is a concern, as usual. Yeah, you, know, you do have to worry about you know how it works in real life via versus how it works in game and the best best methodologies there. So let's see. Okay, where's there? We'll put some uh need one by twos here. All right, so what we'll do is we will go one by twos here, like so. And then we will go to uh, two by twos. Okay. And I think I have one somewhere here, right there. And so see how these, these two by twos, they actually turn into uh, ones at some point. All right, so we can actually, you know, this is all faceted in the in the picture. You know, it has all sorts of facets, so we can kind of dial in. That's okay if it looks a little sawtoothy. That's fine. Let's test something here. Yeah, because this is a seaplane, it has the, um, you know, it has to have all the stuff for planing. So that allows us to make kind of a chunky, like, it allows us to do stuff like that because this is part of the planing surface there. So that's not a big deal. We can work with that. Because some of this is going to be set up for this planing surface and hopefully make a little bit more buoyant space in there. And this should give us some more buoyant volume coming in here as well. And then we can deal with that later as we transition it. Nice. 
Not good. So I think this is working well. Oh. All right, nice. That's actually working pretty well. That's giving me a nice, interesting kind of seaplane bottom. The real one also has gear. I'm not putting gear in here. Yeah, I I don't really need this to. I don't need this, nor do I really want it to land on the land. This is kind of just a seaplane. So I'm digging on that belly. I think this belly looks even better, and then I should be able to get more buoyancy out of this. And then it has a step plane, so once it gets to the back here, it changes anyway, so we can kind of continue that step plane. You know, the design of the belly is set so that when this takes off, it will get up on plane and be able to... Uh, you know, ride on top of the water, and that's what we want in game anyway, but it also helps us with the design that it looks normal for this type of plane to have this kind of change in shape. It's not abnormal, really. It's actually quite normal. All right, and then where do we want to go there? So let's do this. So I think we should be able to cut that in. Well, what's that? We need to take a gap, so we need like eight maybe, and then this needs to go. And then let's try to join this. I think I had it right the first time. There we go. So that will go like that. But it needs to go further back. Okay, so where can this join? Can't join there. It can't join here because that's not going to have enough for two by two. So it has to be here. So there's no other choice than for this to go here. So this is actually fine. I should be able to make this work here. That's good. That will go like this. And then what we'll do is we'll cut out here. Cut this. And then we'll change this shape up to here. What's that going to be? That's fine, like that. Nice, and then this will be flattened, so that will work out all right. And then there's not going to be really anything in the in the tail section. All right, good, like that. And then I can always put half blocks to get more buoyancy out of it as necessary, but, you know, we'll do a bunch of stuff trying to see what uh, buoyancy we need. Oh, come on. There we go. Nice like that, right there. All right, good. So that's really uh, coming along. I like that shape. That integrates nicely. Giving us a little bit more of a bulbous belly, which should help with buoyancy and any issues with that. So nice. So this came together actually pretty, uh, pretty painlessly so far. Again, we have yet to float test this. I have no clue. I have to put hips on it. So the hips, this... That square section is actually really going to make it a lot easier to integrate hips in there. So that's looking good. A little bit less pointy nose than I initially would have liked, but it's not bad. I can always pointy up the nose if I want. I have some space like this. I would just have to switch that out for 1x4s, and I can make the nose even pointier. I may do that. Let's try that. So instead of throwing all that work away, I'm just going to go like this. I often will delete, delete, and then it's... If I want to go back, I have to back it up. So what I'm going to do is just cut this nose off. See what the longer nose looks like to me. Because I may want the longer nose, I think. I'm really thinking that longer nose will be better. A lot of a lot of the planes, I don't want it. This one has that long nose, and so I'm kind of interested in having it. And it has a really pointy nose, this one. And then what we want to put in here is, so I can go pointier too. How pointy do I want to go on this nose? That's the issue. See, like I can go really pointy up here too. The real question is how pointy do I want this nose? I don't think I want it too pointy. 
So let's try it a little less pointy. We'll make it, I want it longer, but not super duper pointy. What, am I, what do I need there? Uh, one buys? Do I need one buys? What do I need? That's a two by right there. Should go there. That should. Oh, come on. I gotta rotate it correctly. Though. I just have to rotate it correctly. Nope. That's not gonna fit in there. Oh, it's, will it take a regular two by four? Come on. Give me the right click. Ding dong. Okay, it does take that. Yeah, so that's actually looking pretty good there. It's I like that longer nose. Yeah, I'm liking this longer nose, I think. I think the other one was a little bit too beaky, or a little bit too short. This one's getting a little bit better, I think. Nice, so I'm liking this shape better. Yeah, I'm I'm digging on this. This is coming along nicely, I think. Yep. Yeah, I really like this. This is this is looking a little sharp up here, but uh, we'll see how it how it flushes out. Yeah, not bad. I'm digging it. I have one there, right there, I think. Yeah, I'm really liking that. That's looking cool. Nice long nose. Kind of like a Duke or something. Duke was a twin engine. Uh, nice plane. They're very old now. Or 1960s, 50s, 60s, some of the Dukes. A little bit beaky, but it's not terrible. I could always cut this and go twos. So let's do this again. Let's grab this. This might be a hair beaky for me. So let's cut that. And let's try to trim it a little bit. Just square it up just a hair. Yeah, I think I'm going to like this better. Yeah, and then what do I want? I want this. Yeah, that's, that's better than super duper beaky. That rounds it a little bit better. You know, so I'm purposefully cutting down the versatility by not putting gear on there, and that's kind of what I want. Is That's really good. I like that. All right, so these are going the trash. Yeah, you know, like I said, I'm purposely cutting down the versatility because I want to... You know, have a reason to build some land planes. This proportionally is looking pretty good. Looking good. Let's say it before I have a coronary. Let's say twin uh, C plane. Okay, good. So if I lost that, I'd be a little annoyed. So let's go ahead and we'll trim in the cockpit a little bit. So this will be our firewall here. And let's cut that. All right, like that. And then this is nice. We can put a, some gauges right there, some panels there. So I'm going to actually keep that open. And then this here can slide, the seat can slide in. And I want this to be, you know, the size of an aircraft you have to crawl through. So you need uh, two blocks to be able to have my panels in there. All right, so that's a nice view. You know, definitely putting it single 
uh, single pilot is really going to make it so that it's easier to keep it thin and trim and doesn't turn too bulbous. Right, and then this here is going to be the floor pan, and then we we have to do a float test at some point. I I can I can do a bunch of things to try to get more buoyancy out of this, but kind of looking all right right now. And you start adding the hips, so the hips will are kind of they come off the sides here, and they add a lot of buoyancy. And so I want my center of so my I want my wing. I'm trying to see exactly where. So I'm going to move my props a little bit. And I'm going to set where I want my center of lift. So Again, it's not it this I'm not building the C star, so this is going to be kind of my own design. So I'm thinking that looks pretty good. I don't want to shorten it. It's looking proportionally pretty good. Thinking there maybe. You know, the engine's going to be a lot of the weight. That's going to be easy to drag forward. So, All right, so let's start building the wing, and that will help me build the hips. All right, so there's going to be the wing. It has a nice... Um, so these are actually going to... these. So that's probably going to be my wing's width right there. I'm just proportionally kind of looking at it, and then that will kind of stick ahead of the wing. Let's get a measurement on that. That is four. And then I want to go four off of this. One, two, three, four. All right, nice. So plenty of room if I ever want to make this a turbine. It has a really nice flat, straight wing. So we'll probably do a flat section like that, and then do a nice one by four sweep. Or we can do a full, uh, full flat front. I never use wing blocks. I may play with them for a second here, just for a hair of lift. I use, I almost never use them. Just do them as leading edges, maybe. And then I want, oh, I don't know. It has to be three, five wide to have enough space to put all my componentry in for my engines. So that's one, three, five right there. So one, two, three, one, two. Okay, good. And measure that out. So with that, that is going to be so that will work. So that will take a three, a three by wide engine in there. All right, nice. I almost never use these wing blocks. And I like to store some fuel. I think in the engine, the cell is going to be part of it, and then in the regular rest of the wing blocks, I think I'll do it. I never do these leading edges of the wings, but. It has a pretty thin wing. I'll move it as necessary, but I have the freedom to move it now. Okay. Okay. That looks like a pretty good size wing for this type of airplane. Yeah, it's not bad. And then I want to kind of see where we. Uh, let's see, I need a four by. Let's see.
That's not bad there. I don't know. I'm not going to use these wing sections. It's too limiting for me. I never use them. Just make my own custom wings here. That's better there, I think. All right, so there's kind of the wing design. Good shape, good sizing. Can add flaps and everything else. All right, good. So that's going to tell me some things that I need to do. It has almost vertical struts. Uh, let's see if I can do just a... Let's try something here. I don't know how high this is off of the... This gives it just a little bit of shape. Can't go too, f too fat on this wing just because of the... Yeah, uh, you know what? I'm going to probably have to go... I probably could go double thickness on the wing. I think that would look all right, actually. So let's try that. This will also allow me to put fuel in the wing, which is better and more ideal. Go up one on that. There we go. All right, nice. That's a good attach point. So I like that. Gives me a good height on there. And then all this interior here can be used for fuel in the wings, which is nice and convenient, plus really good hiding spaces for microcontrollers. That is definitely, the I think, the right step there. That's why I usually go too wide on the wings, is it just gives me so much space. Yeah, sometimes it looks a little bit thick, but um, I think this will look all right. Yeah, this is going to give me a lot more opportunity and choices there. So nice, that's looking pretty good. Doesn't look un it doesn't look disproportional. It looks pretty good. You know, just a touch thick, but not not terrible at all. And I might thin the back. I might thin the back the uh, trailing edge out. Not really. I think I I need it for the the flaps and everything. So I probably will tr thin it. Let's try it. Uh, let's see what do we need. Four by. So that's four there. Cut you. Cut all the way around here. Yeah, this is actually probably going to help when I put in the control surfaces. So. All right, good. So that, I think, that that's nice. That gives the wing good shape. And then I'll cut in control surfaces in there. That'll be fine. And flaps and everything. So that's good. That's That's coming along really nicely. That has a good shape to it. All right, float test um, after I get hips on. So I really need hips. And so I put the wing on because I need to know where the center of gravity is going to be. It's going to be here. And so one thing I'm going to do is we're going to be putting a bunch of engine components in here. And so they're going to go right by the props. And so, you know what, let's just do this. Ah, uh, come on. So let's take a, let's start just plumbing the engine then really super simply. That's just going to give us a more accurate weight. You do modular engines, of course. So why would I do anything else? And it's pretty bulbous, the engine area on the Dornier. So I think it will proportionally look too thin if I put uh, flats. So we'll do raids. We'll do radials there. Go to the 16s. Go to the 16s. 
Two sixteens should be good to give us a good speed. That's looking pretty good. So you can see that's gonna raise that's gonna raise our center of gravity. That's actually a good thing. By raising the center of gravity here, it's gonna put it in line with our center of thrust, but we do have to worry about center of buoyancy and stuff like that. So let's continue with, with the put a couple belts on. Let's go ahead and trying to get as many of these components that we need on there just so that I can get a reasonably accurate weight. And we definitely want to make sure we make enough power. So two engines running dual alternators should be fine. We don't probably don't need a, an actual generator on there. Nice. Do some manifolds. And we'll do these towards the towards the propeller end so that we have plenty of space to hook all the air and the actually let's go here i might want to put the air up front let's go like this right here is good i know i don't need two in the bottom i'm gonna stick them on there anyway just for my own peace of mind all right good now i'm just throwing a couple extra components on here just to i want to get the mass as close to where it's going to be as possible so fuel is coming from the wing so i definitely want that there towards the front or towards the center section there and then air can go like that towards the extremes this one actually i probably want in the front as well and then exhaust will both be facing backwards on the top Uh, that's actually probably right. That's going to punch through the nacelle. So that's looking pretty good there. All right, so this engine here is going to come forward into the nacelle there. So that's looking pretty, pretty good right there, I think. All right, let's hook this up to the... Just want to hook this up so that we get a, an accurate center of mass here. All right, so that's giving me a better center of mass, which we can work with. Again, I want my center of buoyancy at the center of mass, at the center of lift, and so all that I need to do. So not much is going in the tail. Most of it's coming up here. I can actually kind of, you know what I can do? I can trim this tail all the way up here, too. Yeah, like this can all get trimmed here. Oh, I didn't mean it. That was the one block I didn't mean to delete. All right, and then what do I want to do here? That's exactly what I just tried not to do. Okay, I just need to put wedges in. All right, gotcha. All right, nice. So I like that sculpted tail a little bit better. So that's looking good. So now, uh, so I'm imagining my center of mass is going to be here. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to plan for my center mass here. I can use weight blocks. I can use some tricks to get it moved where I want it. But uh, we're going to kind of plan for it to be here. All right. And so that's where I want my center of buoyancy. And so I need to put some hips on. So kind of determine how to do hips. And I have to, you know, again, I have to think of how the game functions and how it's going to have to be game-wise. So tend to have to over buoyancy a little bit. So we're talking maybe there on the hips. Like so. So it kind of has multi-function hips, it looks like. See if I can integrate some of these multi-function. There's like multiple, multiple, multi-tier hips. Let's put it that way. 
Uh, let's not do that like that. Let's go. So. And then, um, you know, I can always go to half blocks if need be to add more to add more buoyancy. So I want to start with whole blocks, and then if I don't need them, I know that I'm good. And just to cut down the drag in the water a little bit, I'm going to put in one-by-one one wedges where the water touches. Try to get this hip to really work for me. There we go. All right. I really want to get a float test. Float test is kind of the make or break. I'm, you know, I'm confident this will work anyway, but a float test really helps to solidify that. Where it's a lot of guesswork until that gets put in. Once I have a float test, I know, will this sucker float? That's very much what I want to figure out. And so this, this Dornier has pretty, it's a pretty, pretty wide hips on it. Ideally, I don't need as big a hips as I'm putting on here and I can trim them. You know, kind of my method is go go more buoyancy than I need and then trim it as necessary. I should be able to grab this whole hip and move it as necessary. Probably This probably needs to go back under the wing a little bit. Okay. Probably up to like that. So I'm going to start overboard with buoyancy as is my way, and then I will cut it back as necessary to kind of get it to what we actually need. That way I'm not, uh, that way, you know, it works. And then I can trim it, you know, because we have to put in seats, we have to put in all the operating systems. And so we're, we keep adding mass and it's, it's a pain to add buoyancy later. If we add it all now, it's pretty easy. I can delete it and trim things down once we know what the final kind of mass is going to be. Nice. And I love to trim these hips. I just need uh, we need to do a float test, need to put in all the components, and then these hips are easy to change later. But it's uh, much easier to over, over buoyancy it and then cut it back as necessary. All right, nice. So a nice flat bottom will help us get out of the drink. The drink is quite challenging to get out of at times, so you want to have a nice flat bottom in game. It really helps. All right, nice. There is the the hips. They're integrated pretty well. They probably shrink as stated. And then this is actually a good place for fuel too. We can even fuel in, put some fuel in here as, if need be. And then this is just weight reduction here, cutting out stuff that I don't need. All right, good. So that's nice. Why? Okay. I just didn't finish the side here. All right, nice. All right, so those hips are probably going to have to have to move a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and do a float test. So let's uh, stick the sucker in the water. Let's get a feel for it. You know, everything looks huge in the editor until you get it in game, and then it looks scaled more where it is. That is sitting beautifully. It's a little bit low, which we can... We're a little bit low on buoyancy, but it's sitting flat, which is key. That is really sitting nicely. Like, I'm on the wing... The furthest part of the wing, that's the longest lever arm. That's why you put ailerons on the edges. And you see it, um, yeah, it's tipped in the water, but it's not bad. So a little bit of buoyancy added to this, and we should be good, man. So that's that's actually not too shabby. 
don't have water in my wings or something, do I? So these wings are also solid. They're going to have air volume in them and most likely fluid, fuel. I'm going to probably put fuel in the in the hips. So this is pretty good here. We're a little bit crunched on the ceiling, but I want this kind of crunched feeling in here. I'm liking the visibility. I like the long nose. I might drop the pilot down one. I don't know yet. But this is uh, this is pretty this is pretty good. Let's play with it just a hair. So I want to buck the um, I don't know. I'm trying to think uh, if I should buck the tail up a little bit. All right. So let's start by doing this. Uh, we need more buoyancy, and so one of the ways to add more buoyancy is one of those. Those are one by fours. Those are not be touched. So the this all this here can go, except the front leading edge there, which I didn't want to cut. So here to where we start hitting fours, right there. Okay, good. And let's cut out all this, and then let's replace this with one by ones. This is not, you know, one of the reasons I want this to be uh, diesel. It's not going to need a lot of fuel. Fuel adds a lot of weight, makes the job of buoyancy a lot harder. So this should add a good bit of buoyancy by doing this. Let's test it again. There you go. You can see it's sitting up a little bit higher now. More of the uh, more of the hips are are visible. Nice. I'm digging the shape too. Shape's nice. The propellers are nicely out of the water. The tailplane's out of the water. This is where the entry door is going to be, but we're a little swamped now. It's pretty susceptible to me being on it. Could try putting a top hatch somewhere, but it, it's going to be a pain where I'd have to put it. But this is this is coming along pretty well here. So it has big, it has much wider hips, and so I might do a second tier of hips. Let's try that. See how unbearably ugly it looks. I don't. I think I might be able to make it look all right. I'll show you the reference material in a second. It has it has like dual hips on there. So if we can get the get even more buoyancy in here, we'll be uh, really in good shape. How much buoyancy this little section give me? I have no idea. That's one by twos. A couple more places we can uh, add buoyancy. We can add some here. All right, so that's a good fair bit of buoyancy. Bringing the mass down, pretty good mass, 3,500 right now. It has all the engine components on there. All right, so we're sitting up even more. I don't want the I don't want the horizontal tailplane in there at all. So I'm gonna probably add uh, try to get some fl more float so I can move these back more. But I want to I definitely need to keep the nose out of the water. So I don't know why it's it's kind of choosing a side to lean to. You know what it is? The center of gravity is high, so it is doing that. So I'm probably going to have to put water, uh, fuel down low. Let's try something here. Let's cut out these weight blocks. Because I have it artificially high right there. And let's go ahead and... Don't really want any fuel in the tail at all. That's a big no-no. 
And then this this whole floor here can be can also be wedges to help alleviate some of this and add buoyancy. I don't want to do it yet though. It's kind of a pain. Uh, let's go ahead and put. And I don't need a ton of fuel in here. You know, probably oh I don't know, five percent maybe. So that I took a bunch of mass out of where the propellers were, and I added it into the pontoons, and we're sitting nice now. We're sitting pretty nice. I need to get that tail out of the water. So what I'll do is square off the tail a little bit. You actually saw that in the reference material. The tail is a little bit more squared. So what I will do is add a square tail here, and that will really help me not have issues. So what I'll do is I need to pick kind of an arbitrary space. So right, oh, I don't know. Let's grab this. Let's save it first. Okay. Let's grab this. So I like the shape of that. And let's cut that. And by squaring up the tail, we should be able to add quite a bit of buoyancy to the rear. See how this behaves when I get to it here. Okay. And let's rejoin this. This is given a, a new see all like all that can be turned into one by two wedges here. I'm gonna probably definitely have to do it, so I might as well just do it sooner than later, but I just have yet to do it. So I'll start by start by ripping out this whole midsection here. And then that will all be wedges. Adds a considerable amount of air, which adds quite a bit of buoyancy. And then this will go to here. Okay. And then, like I said, that whole floor underneath the cabin can be made into wedges as well. And I have to, okay, so is this going to leak fuel back here? It will. Okay, I have to be careful. This can't leak fuel back here, so I need to, wherever my fuel spawner is, which is right, oh, I got it on the first click, nice. Right there, that will seal my tank up. Yep, so that seals the tank, so now it won't it won't uh, spawn fuel back here. All right, and then what do I want to do? I want to grab one of you. Nope, I want you one of you. Like so. Do I have another one of you somewhere? Thought I did. What is this? That's exactly what I was. Nope, that's one by. Okay. These. This is what I'm looking for. Two by fours right there. Two by four right here. Okay. There's a two by four right there. Where is the one buys here? No, you're right there. There you are. Okay. Okay, that was backwards. That's not helpful. So we're going to switch to twos. Like so. There we go. Let me join that up a little bit quicker. Going to give us a fair bit of buoyancy here. Thickening the tail, and uh, that should really add a good bit of buoyancy for us here. Is there any way to join that? What is that, a two? That's a two. 
I should be able to add that, uh, join that up. Let's see. You know what? I don't really care about it. I'm going to fix it in a second here anyway. So let's leave that. Let's delete all that. Doesn't delete this. This can go. There we go. All right. And patent the tail up a little bit, which I'm not a huge fan of, but again, we have to do what we have to do to get the buoyancy to kind of be where we want it to be. So it has to be done. That's actually not too bad there. That is not too bad. I'm not disliking that at all, so. Bingo. Look at that. That came out pretty good. Uh, let's see. We need to finish you here. So you are... Where you at there, guy? There you are. Be a pain to put it. I'll just place it here. That's there. Okay. Nice. That actually turned out really nice. Not exactly how I wanted it initially, but it's not offensive, and it should add a good bit of buoyancy to the to the rear. You know, fatter tail is going to just add a lot of buoyancy to the back and keep that back coming up out of the water. Yep, a little bit, a little bit square than I like, but. It's not bad. The, the hips can come back if need be, but that tail should be floating better now. Look at it. See how much better that tail's floating? That's a lot better now. That is really that is really helpful. That's super helpful. You see how, it, like before the, uh, the rudder was in the water, now we're good. So that low center of gravity now, because the fuel is in the pontoons, That should, see, we're not even tipping towards, why is it doing this? Tipping opposite to where I'm standing on. What is that about? That's weird. I don't know why it's doing that, but that's weird. Make sure I'm not getting, I don't have any fuel in here or anything. I don't. I'll figure out what's going on with that later, but um, we're in good shape here. This is really, uh, it's floating pretty well. It's sleek looking. This should be fast. You know, it's going to have two, what are those, 16s? Two, no, yeah, two 16s. So that should, uh, that should, that's, this should scream. Like the, you know, there's a much heavier vehicle, but the, the Hummingbird has two, what does it have, two 10s, maybe? I think it has two 10s, and it goes 200 knots, so. I get 200 knots out of this, I'm happy. like the shape, the shape looks really nice. It's uh, generally pretty... Pretty, pretty good. Yeah, so here. this is coming along nicely here. And so plenty of work we can do on this to make this function better, add some buoyancy. You know, I'm trying to stay away from glitches, but need be, I can. So that, you know, I like to try not to, and then if I need to later, I can. I can also add a little bit of bulbousness to underneath with some one-by-one one wedges, and that should allow me to get a little bit more buoyancy in the center section if need be. So I have a bunch of things I can do, and since this is only going to be a seaplane, I'm not doing any sort of landing gear on this, which the real one has landing gear. I don't have to worry about, you know, making sure I have square enough doors to get the gear in, and then the gear wells are wet. The water is going to have to go into them because they can't seal, and so that's lost buoyancy. I'm not going to do any of that, so I don't have to worry about that. So I hope you guys enjoy this, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.